Here's what happened round seven of the FIM Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of France at Villars and Suze Co. MX2 race one, Kevin Hordmo on the FNH Kawasaki crossed the Foxhole shot line for the second time this year, but by the time he got the turn two, it was Roman the most like who led the way. Just behind them in third, fourth place, the 198 Thibaut Beniston and Jack Chambers there at number 12. Federico Tuani in red, a wildcard rider this weekend, quickly getting shuffled back as the Yamaha rider came through. But he was under attack immediately from Kai DeWolf, number 74, who moved into third place and then second with this move on Hordmo at the top of the hill. He then went after his teammate, number 39, Van der Mostijk. While that was happening, Beniston down the inside of Hordmo to move into third place on lap two. Big moment there for DeWolf, lucky to stay upright in second position. Beniston capitalised, but not for long. DeWolf fought back immediately, pushed the Frenchman back into third. But then the three riders, first, second, third, locked together at the bottom of the hill. Beniston got into second, DeWolf spun up. And a couple of corners later, Beniston was the new leader with that move on Van der Mostijk. That was lap seven. DeWolf then charged his way up the inside of his teammate to move into second place. And then Liam Evans also joined the party. He got himself into third. He was then quickly joined by his teammate as well. As he slipped up the inside of DeWolf to move in a second, Adamo also found his way past the 74 to go third. Those two banging bars at the top of the hill. DeWolf eventually got the better of the Italian, but it wasn't for long because no sooner had he got back into third place, just dragged his foot on the foot peg there, and that tipped him over. Adamo back into third to Wolf four, and the most like fifth, but no one a match for Thibaut Beniston, who cruised to victory in race one. His eighth career victory, Beniston, Everts, Adamo, to Wolf, and Van der Mostijk. MX2, race two, watch the center of the gate. Three riders come together here, the one in the middle, Andrea Adamo, if he finished second in the race, he could take over the championship leader's red plate in the absence of Yago Kiertz, who was injured after crashing out of the qualifying race. Lucas Kunin with his second foxhole shot of the campaign for Nastan Husfana, the number 96, looking to try and pick off a race win. Behind him in the early stages, Thibaut Beniston getting caught there in second place as the Dwarf went through. Meanwhile, the 39 of Van der Mostijk went down, picked himself up in 20th. He would get back to seventh by the time the flag fell. All eyes on this battle between DeWolf and Beniston. Once again, the Frenchman charged down the inside to move into second on lap eight. And then just as he did in race one, DeWolf came under attack from the KTMs as well. Everts muscling his way through into third just after the halfway point. DeWolf though, fighting back immediately. Fighting through the field was Adamo. Adamo all of a sudden found himself in fourth as he found his way past DeWolf on the Husqvarna. He then went round the outside of his teammate to move into third place. He did catch Thibaut Beniston towards the end of the race, though, but he just wasn't able to do anything about the Frenchman. And what a spectacular performance it was, though, from Lucas Koonen, the Nastan Husqvarna rider, the 16-year-old, winning his first MX2 race from Thibaut Beniston, who crossed the line second to win his home Grand Prix with a first and a second place. Adamo third, Everts fourth, DeWolf fifth in the race. And the overall Grand Prix, though, Beniston on top in France with a win in a second. Adamo two thirds for him, edging out his teammate on the same points, Liam Everts. Yago Kietso, despite not lining up, still leads the championship by a point over Adamo with the Wolf there in third, 11 points further back. Thibaut Beniston's success this weekend, though, means he's now four points off of third in the championship. Bittersweet day for Monster Energy Yamaha. They lead the championship, but Kiet's not here to defend. I really remember that one. Uh, a lot of fun was there. Uh, they was crazy. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of races. A bit tough and mentally also <clears throat> was not easy. But yeah, we found a solution and I just uh, bounced back. And I felt really good at the moment. And I'm uh, really happy about uh, this weekend. In MXGP race one, Jeremy Siwa just got the drag on the 61 of Jorge Prado to cross the Foxhole shot line.
for the fifth time this year. Prada right there behind him. Vebra number three in third. Hurling's in fourth position. The scene was set for something of a big race here. Hurling started to drop off the pace a little early on, though. Took him more than half distance to get himself fired back up. Siva lost the lead on the opening lap to Prado. And also towards the end of the lap, Roman Fevre got himself into third as he muscled aside the number 84. Lap five, Jeremy Siwa, cautious as he went around the outside of Prado, but he did get the drive uphill to take over the lead from the Gas Gas rider. And then Fevre got close as well. These two fall over second position for a few laps. Fevre thought he'd gone through, but Prado responding immediately. The Frenchman had to wait a little longer if he was to find a way past. Albi Ferrato, though, out of sixth position. Big crash for the Italian rider. Would not line up for race two either. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Hurlings did find his speed in the second half of the race. Caught Roman Fevre, who looked like he was going to be content with fourth. Hurlings then went after Prado. Four laps to go. He found his way into second. Audacious outside move for the bullet. And then top of the hill, the last two riders in shot look. Fevre going around the outside between the trees. Prado to his inside. Thought he'd got the pass done here. Still had work to do. And then as Prado just spun up coming out, that was Roman Fevre into third. Prado down to fourth. Ruben Fernandez fifth. But for the first time this year, and for the 17th time in his career, Jeremy Seawer crossed the line to win race one from Hernings, Fevre, Prado, and Fernandez. Heading into MXGP race two, Jeffrey Hurlings was now four points behind Jorge Prado. The same two riders hit the line though, Siwa with foxhole shot number six, Prado just behind him. Hurlings emerging around about 10th at the top of the hill, eighth a couple of corners later, but it would get worse for the number 84. Siwa led the way, Fevre there in second, Prado third. And then watch here, Hurlings comes into land, goggle strap flapping, the goggle strap broke, unheard of at this level, came into the goggle lane, got the goggles changed, went back out in 20th place, got himself up to 16, but a lap later, Hurlings was out, look at the right foot peg, hanging off the side of that KTM. Two things that don't normally happen, happened to the bullet in race two. Meanwhile, Glenn Koldanoff got the better of the Swiss rider, Valentin Guillo, to move into six, that's where he would finish. And about six laps from the end, after a couple of mistakes, Bevra got close to Jeremy Siwa. That was the lead change there on lap 12. Siwa tried to push, then got unsettled coming into this turn here. Made a mistake through this turn as well. And that was it in the end. Roman Fevre, Hill clicked his way to the final corner. A home race quite literally for number three, Roman Fevre. Grew up about an hour or so from here. He wins race two. But it's second overall for him in the overall Grand Prix. Jeremy Siwa, his 1-2, good enough to get him the Grand Prix victory. So Siwa wins the French Grand Prix. His 11th career victory, his first of the season, his first podium of the season from Fevre going 3-1, Prado 4-3. Prado now goes 24 points clear of Jeffrey Hurlings as we head to round five in Latvia. Fevre up to third, Fernandez and Siwa rounding out the top five. Siwa now fifth. But what a great day here. Siwa, Fevre, Prado on the top steps of the podium. Prado still leads. I, I wanted to win, you know, I never had a 1-1 one -one and I was pushing hard and had a good flow and everything, but yeah, Romain was quick, you know, he had good lines, he was quicker in one or two sector. Uh, it's hard to not make any mistakes, you know, so I did a few, but no, it's amazing. After all, you know, to have a win, you forget about all the negativity and it's amazing to see the fans out there. I mean, it's incredible, though. The start straight is so long and it's packed full of people.